Morning Show. I'm the big beefy boy, Shaz Beef. Today I'm joined by Kieran Dunphy. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know what to I do. love it. I usually use yeah. uh, pretend to do the old books thing. Yeah, well, you weren't here when we got to celebrate uh, 100,000 views on all different platforms so congratulations to you sir you shake yeah, your hand if you want thanks very much, yeah. Thanks yeah, very much for watching a bit if, of a weak handshake yeah from, from you if you're watching this though we really thank you as well because a lot of it is being consumed in small chunks and clips and formats and stuff so if you're watching this we really appreciate it if you comment we love it because yeah. we'll respond back to everything especially the negative ones yeah moral loves to get negative comments attack morrow uh, yeah he got caught called a bell in the other day and he was like this guy called me a bell and then set up a tiktok account to uh he defend himself he literally set up a tiktok he account. did but uh, that's like cardinal sin 101 for social media don't feed the trolls do not feed those trolls thank you very much though for uh but following the channel like and subscribe it really helps we're going to keep doing it anyway but uh it, yeah. it, it really does help with and or without you we're still going to maintain being voices within the landscape of pro wrestling and that leads us perfectly into what today's topic is going to be we're going to be talking about the voices of oh, pro shame. wrestling what a segue beautiful segue isn't wow. it how beautiful do you do it? how do you do it i'm just the king of it i'm just the king of it the people who provide the lyrics to the music that has been created within the ring oh my goodness yes. Shane. Yes. Wow, you're on a roll today thank sir you, thank you very much uh, i i think we start from a linear uh, point of view okay go back to you know, everyone is going to have their favorite periods of wrestling, which is going to be commented on by different people. But going back, say, from the starting point, you have... 1922. George Hackenschmidt. <laughs> no, but, like, you have... You know, you can talk about Gordon Soley and, and, and things, but, like, Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heenan yeah. are, to me, what wrestling commentary was. And it's... Uh, it's so far, I think, the, the essence of that is still there, but it's so far removed from that chemistry that we had. Yeah, because I think, like, Jesse the Body, Lord Alfred Hayes... I like Jesse the Body. Yeah, like, they're, they are wordy contenders to be... Roddy Piper jumped in, Mr. Perfect jumped in. Savage jumped in. Savage jumped in. But I think the chemistry between, between Heenan and Gorilla will be unrivaled forever. I mean, yes, JR and, and Jerry Lawler had a, a similar thing going on, but they created that... That duo, that comedy duo, that kind of the two Muppets basically going it was. tit for tat. Yeah. Um, well, you stop it. Like you knew they loved each other and yet they would never portray that on, on screen. Yeah. Uh, it was it was it was actually quite beautiful. And and Heenan himself, like he's an absolute master. Uh comedy genius. Uh, as a kid, I would have grown up thinking that this guy basically should be on on national TV. Should well, be they in kind movies. Of, well, like be they, in, had, they had like uh, their own show and everything. But should be prime like, time. But like I thought outside of wrestling, this guy is surely picking up roles in comedies and whatever. I, I thought he was like super duper famous beyond wrestling. Yeah. Uh, and he should have been. He was a total genius. And th together, I think for me, especially compared to what comes after that when Vince gets involved, uh, it really highlights how great they were. Yeah, I... When Vince got involved, you know, oh, what a maneuver. Um, it coincided with, like, maybe a drop-off in the peak of what wrestling popularity was. Yeah. And, what? you know, it's hard to live up to Gorilla. Like, because we're still feeling the effects of people trying to live up to JR now. You know, it's hard to live up to the powerhouses that was Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heenan. But why did Gorilla kind of step away? Well, before you talk about Gorilla stepping away, he, like, to highlight how important they were for the show... Heenan's exit was portrayed as an online storyline. You know, yeah. like it wasn't like he just disappears one day and he's gone and he's suddenly on WCW. They made a storyline out of it. They kicked him out of the of the mm. building. It was comedy gold again. Beautiful, Beautiful. yeah. Uh, Gorilla, I would just expect he was old and tired and he and his like, best friend, he's, his he's, buddy was gone. He What's he going to do? He hangs around in like a presidential capacity. We know, like remember Vader attacked him and stuff. Um, but, you know, we... Do you think he had a, another position? No, oh, he would have had a position because it wasn't that no, thing like with Vince the Senior. Gorilla position. Oh, ho, ho. wasn't that a thing though with Vince uh, Senior saying you can never fire Gorilla Monsoon? Yes, and he didn't. He probably came up in another position. Yeah. But like uh, the the best you could point to for a Bobby Heenan perspective, especially, is Royal Rumble nineteen ninety two. Like oh, that yeah. is an absolute masterclass. Uh, he really got Ric Flair over. Oh. He made him out to because Ric Flair is coming in from a different company, and although he is Ric Flair. You know, he's coming into the cartoonish world mm -hmm. of WWE. And the way Bobby 
got him over in he's the real world's champion uh, and then in that 1992 Royal Rumble he, he I thought he came out looking like a star now WrestleMania 8 might have snookered him in the fact that he didn't get the main event with Macho and everyone really wanted Hogan and Flair anyway but still like if that, I if I was to pick a if I had a, a buddy who was not into wrestling and I was like here I'm gonna show you one thing to try to get into wrestling I 100% would show them the 92 Rumble. The only thing that's missing from that for me is the music. It doesn't matter. for to, Because of Heenan's commentary. Mm. And and I've done it actually in college. A uh, mate of mine was not interesting at all. And we watched the 92 Rumble because he loved it so much. We watched the 93 Rumble. We watched the 94 yes. Rumble. And we brought and it then, all the And up. then it starts getting bad then. Uh, but no. By 90, the time, 95 is pretty terrible. But we, we were up at like 2001. 94 like. 2001 we got to 94 I think. wasn't great either. But they're, they're still hilarious. Yeah. Like a rumble is, is it's got everything. You've got your comedy, your seriousness, you've got your like unusual characters. Was it 97 when Fake Diesel came like fourth or third? Uh, or maybe 96? No, 97. 97. Was 97? Yeah. Was not Fake Diesel, Kane like. But you not think, yeah, I suppose that. But I, <laughs> I, I think with the rumble as well, it's a real, um, like the reason I would show rumble and especially 92 is the, like to have mates, you start rooting for somebody. Yeah. yeah. But in that particular one, Heenan, and flair just oh, it's just it, it's it's perfect it, it's phenomenal oh mr perfect as well he was involved in that whole storyline too um you know well, but you can't understand gorilla in you know wrestlemania 3 the unstoppable force meets the movable object oh, yeah like what that's probably the most historic call in all of wrestling yeah and you know he he, he had it he he was the voice for because we were all trading tapes when we were younger and we getting getting your hands on one of those was like gold dust even wcw was even rarer like hearing a young jim ross is very jarring yeah. to what he became i had great american bash 1990 sting defeats rick flair and and it's just weird hearing the the commentary and how it's presented in comparison to Did, wwe with, with gorilla there was this gr- almost like a granddad like an, a, a supreme gentleman professionalism vibe from him. Yeah. And it's it's kind of, it's so contrasting to say the mid 90s then when this trashy version, like it's kind of like Vince is there. It's all trashy. It's like magazine type vibes. Bro. You've, yeah, you've got, well, not even speaking about Russo and his magazine stuff, but like you've got backstage Todd Peddingdale, the live wire, whatever it was called. You got Sonny on stage. Sean and Mooney. Sean and, Mooney. Yeah. It just seems... It just seemed like a lesser form of how... Yeah, Coliseum Home Video. That's the peak of backstage stuff for me. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I get what you're saying. Around 95, 96, when it was yeah. just like... Even had uh, Michael Hayes. What was his name? Uh, uh, Doc Hendricks. Doc Hendricks. And you're just like, oh, you're yeah. messing up Michael I think they tried to bring in Jimmy Garvin one time as well. As like, uh, there's I seen something with him and Mean Gene, mm-hmm. and Jimmy Garvin's coming out like slagging off the crowd, and I thought that'd be great. And a super young Michael Cole appears. Well, when he yeah, we'll get into him because there's a, he's yeah, been he's around for a long, long time. With, all right, we'll chat about Cole. But um, so just to follow, oh, but I I just want to finish off on Bobby. When he goes to WCW, is he the same Bobby? Um, yes and no. I think he's. I think there's times when he is and you can feel that he's enthusiastic about being there and you can sense it in his voice. And there's other times where he's a bit checked out. Yeah. A bit bitter. I feel like he's living, he's not at home, basically. He wants to be with his good pal Gorilla. Instead, yeah. he's got Tony Schiavone and sometimes Bischoff beside him. Yeah. So, no, I, I think you get bits of Bobby, um, but not the true Bobby. Did you like Schiavone? Did you like him in WWF? Uh... He does a SummerSlam. Shivani and WF, no, I'd have no real... Um, I liked him in WWF. I, I like his voice. I liked it in WCW. No, in WCW, I loved Shivani in WCW. Yeah, but I liked him in WWF as well. I, he, he was only around for like a year. Um, Bischoff, I could take or leave in Sh- any sense. Shivani in WCW, for me, because Vince is now on commentary, When by the time I'm kind of checking out WCW yeah. a bit more a as a kid. And Shivani represents... Uh, like he's very passionate. He comes across like like he knows what he like what he's talking about, 
and yeah, it just feels more. It it felt like it felt bigger for some reason. Like yeah. everything felt larger than life. Uh, even the presentation when they were up on the boot at the top of the that was class. It was deadly. And like yeah. Raw even tried to do that in two thousand and three. Yeah, they changed the desk around to make it feel a bit a- different. AEW did it for a bit, so it is a real yeah cool vibe. But that was the difference, and Shivani led that team pretty damn good. Yeah, I think he did. And there was a few people that kind of came and went from that team too. Um, I liked Mike Tanay when he's in WCW. Uh, he seemed to have a real good uh, penchant for actually calling the action yeah. in the ring. Yeah, because like, we'll get you to know, that. He, carry, he carried that in, onto TNA too. And, you know, I, I think that's maybe what JR did in WWF at around WrestleMania 9 and stuff. I think that's the type of commentator he was. And then I know he had his bout with Bell's palsy, but, like, he becomes this just phenom the voice of wrestling for so many people, he he calls the Attitude Era with with JR or with Jerry the King Lawler. And, you know, looking back on it, like, they're so... He really, really got everything across with such passion. Like, he hated Triple H. You son of a bitch! He hated Triple H. You also sensed he hated Vince... Uh, like J- J- JR is not a great actor, so he he can't actually hold back a li- like when you you really know when he doesn't like something. Yeah, but you also know when he loves something. Like that time when he got moved from Raw to SmackDown, oh, and like, he just one hundred percent. Yeah, or when Triple H is calling Triple H a bastard, you, you know he truly doesn't like Triple H. Yeah. I always felt that. But I I what I really Why? what I really think is contributes to that JR is the fact that, you know, he was the head of talent relations. He was bringing in a lot of these guys. He Mm -hmm. brought in Foley. Mm -hmm. You know, he brought in The Rock. You know, famously, The Rock's production company is called Seven Bucks Production because of a conversation he had with JR when he only had seven bucks in his pocket. Like, you know, JR knew these guys and wanted to see them succeed. So he brought that passion with them to work. And there's a big difference between the JR from when he debuts at the start to yeah, when he... WrestleMania 9. Yeah. To when, he's, American Bash 1990. when he's more like a... Cowboy. Yeah, no, but he's more... He comes across more like an um, like a presenter, like a... A host. A host, exactly. Yeah, like yeah, a host. Yeah. Um, but by the time he kind of gets his feet, he becomes what he what he's really known for, and that's to treat wrestling like a sport. Mm. And that's why he call he compares people to college footballers, and and he talks about you know such an athlete, such an athlete. Exactly, he talks about their pedigree and goes heights back to you know their their amateur career in wrestling or whatever it is. But he legitimizes it. Yeah. And when you have that, and then you also have great chemistry between him and Lawler and a professional like Jr. who knows to give Lawler the space to do his shtick. Uh, to get it in, to give that brevity, uh, I think that's what made JR such a genius because mm. he's also got Vince Kennedy and man in his ear going crazy, going ballistic, and he's able to hold all that thing, all that stuff together. Like, it's a very difficult job. Hey, I, can't, I can't imagine it being any more difficult than the night at Over the Edge with oh, yeah. Owen Hart. Like, I was listening to JR's book and they were like, uh, Owen Hart has passed away and we're going to you in five, four, three, two, one. Didn't tell him. Anything. And he just had to talk through the camera. And you're just like, wow, what a moment to put somebody in. Like, what? Yeah. But what, like, you know, you're putting the ball in it's the dark. hands of someone that will run with it, you know? It's he knows dark. what to do. Um, Vince, yeah, Vince in your ear is not. Imagine you're on KCLR and every time you're about to say something, Vince McMahon is in your ear oh. giving, you, giving you stick. And like, uh, we'll get, like, Foley. Mick Foley left the SmackDown announce job because of the way Vince McMahon spoke to him. And he said it. I Don't speak to me like that, please. Yeah. And then Vince said he wouldn't and then kept doing it. Renee Young, I think, had the same problem like, when she was on. Yeah, she couldn't take it. Like, but, no, like, why would you put up with that abuse? But from a, a guy who wasn't great on commentary himself. But to be fair, he knew what he wanted in his own product. So... Yeah, he wanted, there was a, Vince likes to present wrestling a certain way. Yeah. And if people veer off that certain way, then... He's going to shout at you, even if you're doing it better. Yeah. More often than not, you probably were doing it better. Like, you, if like Michael Cole, when he came in and when he announced for 20 something years, I wasn't a fan of him. No. But that's because he was literally, I think this is what people allude to, doing what Vince wanted verbatim took it under the chin. Just did his job like a professional 
and just did what he want, what Vince asked him. And then when now you can see he's having more fun mm. and fans are having a bit more of a reverence to him now. Yeah. Because you know, maybe they're like he put up with all that stuff for years and now he's you know, he's get he's getting his flowers now. But for years, man, like they tried to replace JR what was it? so he- many times. And then try to replace him with Michael Cole. No one, no one wanted that. Was Michael Cole was a he's a, a conflict news reporter? Like he has some ser- talk about pedigree. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean. He has some serious pedigree. So he's used to war. He was in it with Vince McMahon. Yeah, and but before so Cole went to SmackDown, I think, and then you had still Jerry and and Jr. And then obviously Jerry left because of the cat stuff that was going on, and he she left. She got fired. She got fired, and then you got Heyman introduced. I hate that at the time. Because JR and Jerry the King Lawler, as much as we look back on it now, we say, you know, the, the moral standpoint of 2024. Uh, even it, then, like, I, it's not even the moral standpoint of 2024. It's that, like, we were kids at times. So you don't really know that he's crossing the line on a lot of stuff. Yeah. You also don't know what age he is. You don't know the alleged, alleged stuff. Yeah. So I think looking back on it I'm delighted that Paul Heyman was calling some of the most iconic moments in the peak of wrestling yeah when Tommy Dreamer uh, proclaimed that he wanted to uh, kill him yes um, for abandoning ECW Uh, he gets to call Austin's heel heel turn turn, uh, and then the invasion happens and then he kind of has to you know but he's there at the start of the invasion and helping move all that along as well like I I I, I Looking back on it, I enjoy Paul Heyman. And Paul Heyman like got to learn with JR before as well. You know, they have that history from WCW. But touching upon the King, like, you know, that JR and the King are like that is your childhood, really, because that's what you're listening to more. Like we can talk about Gorilla Monsoon and, and Bobby the Brain Heenan, but we're just seeing these big events. Like we were actively watching Raw and watching yeah. You know all and, the events, and to give King credit, he his voice, his screaming and squealing and everything else, like ah, like constantly every time anything b- crazy would happen, it added a lot to it. Yeah. It did add a lot to it. It's not just JR's calls, so I'll I'll give him that. I'll give him that one. Per, one uh, obviously we're going linear here. We're we're kind of skipping over a certain company, ECW. Yeah, like the the work that Joey Styles, because I wasn't a massive, I didn't have a massive awareness of the company. Until 2004, so before One Night Stand, when like a lot more tapes and stuff became available, well, I loved the Joy Styles. Mm. Like I really enjoyed listening to Joy Styles. And then when he was there for ECW and got his run on Raw, like I loved it. Yeah. That man used to call events on his own. I was about to say, like he's doing one man boot, like which is mental, unbelievably fascinating. Yeah. Um, like the, the the oh my god, oh my god, yeah, it's it's iconic, uh, and it's sad that he left so abruptly and I, like angrily. He, he went onto the website. I think he was working on the website for a long time. But like even that promo that he cut on Jr. and stuff, mm. like when he goes, "I get that I was cut from WrestleMania, but I wasn't good enough for Backlash," yeah, yeah. and you're like. Come on, like Joy Styles is good enough for a backlash. Was that was the original pipe bomb. That was yeah. class. Like yeah. that was the unbelievable passion that he brought to everything. He was doing backstage interviews. You know, it was just he's believable. Yeah. Like he comes across like a bit of a nerd. streetwise wrestling nerd. nerd. Yeah, wrestling nerd, but also a little bit rough around the edges. You'd have to be though to be an ECW. It, is it? He had to be 100 yeah. percent and to do one man boot to call all that stuff. Oh, big props to Joey Styles. I don't think he got his flowers. Think, he, of, think he's Hall of Fame worthy. Uh, yeah, I think so. That's a good show. Yeah, nice one, Joey Styles. So, Joey Styles, would he be your all time one man boot best? Yeah, uh, I don't think I've, there's ever been another exactly. one man boot. Uh, two man, three man. There's been four, four man, man boots. Yeah. Like, um, so obviously we are up to Heyman and Jr. And yeah, now and then, TNA is starting to come. Well, the, TNA were a bit of a mess for a while. Um, but Mike TNA and Don West were. Are they, that is my TNA. Yeah. Like I not Taz. I I I'm not a fan of Taz. Oh, I love Taz. in any way. Oh what? Like uh, commentary. I love them as a wrestler. It's just commentary. No, I, because I was so accustomed to the people that preceded him in that, those roles. Okay. So I was so accustomed to uh, 
JR and the King that I never really gave Michael Cole and Taz a chance. Mm-hmm. And I was so accustomed to Don West and Mike Tane in TNA that I never really gave Taz a chance okay. in, in, in TNA. And in AEW, then uh, that's just, uh, like, you don't know, even know who the main commentators are in that, really. So for Taz, I always felt like he was, he was legit because obviously that was the type of wrestler he was. So everything he would say carried a bit of weight. Mm. Um, so I really liked him in the early in the SmackDown days because I thought he, you know, he had a pedigree about him. Mm. You know, he, what he says, he'd back up. Uh, TNA, I really, I really enjoyed him. I mm. thought he was good, but I didn't have the same uh, West and TNA connection that I you just, had. I just loved my, uh, uh, Mike TNA, like because he's fo- I was following him from WCW onto TNA, and then just when you're talking about Jerry Lawler's scream, like yeah. Don West had a, a way to inflect his voice that. People gave him crap for her, mm. but man was good. Rest in peace, Don West. Yeah, rest in peace, Don West. But Taz, for me, in AEW, is, is gold. I think he's brilliant. I think he's a comedy genius. And I didn't really notice this until back when I was a I don't huge... Do you think he notices it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think back when, when, oh, when, I was, when I was a huge... Yeah. All that stuff. I think back when I was a huge AW Mark and I'd be watching like, uh, what was that YouTube channel thing they had? Dark? No, even... D- Elevation. It, Elevation. So I was watching so much AW. I was watching Elevation, going through like 20 matches. Because they were corpses and squashes. Oh, they were corpses the whole way through and I got to know the real Taz. But that's not commentary though. though. It is commentary. It's it, not. Because, no, because what? No, it's okay. Maybe that isn't commentary. But then when Taz would be on Dynamite, I would, I'd know his personality, so I thought, actually, Taz is a genius. Yeah, but you're not, the commentators aren't really there to get themselves over. But he's not, he wasn't getting himself over. He did, he got himself over on Elevation, and now you knew his personality, so it Ah, lended to Dynamite. No, what I'm trying to say here is Taz's role was never the play-by-play in AEW. That's Excalibur. So I really enjoyed Taz. Why are you... That's Shin fine. Like, why are you shitting on Taz? I'm not shitting on Taz. I kill you. I, I know. You. I know. I really like Taz as a wrestler. Uh, um, as a, as a, a commentator, I like. I think he's perfectly fine. Like, I just, I, I, I was a big. As I said, I was a big fan of Don West and Mike Tanay. All right. Okay. And I was a big fan of Jr. and the King and AW. I'm not a particular fan of at the moment. Anyway. Who? No shit. I was excited for him. You're to not come. a fan of AW. I'm not at the moment. I was excited for him to come into AW. Yeah, I think he's great for you. Like I, I, I liked Taz when he was in Aces and Eights. Even yeah. I liked Taz on screen as Taz. Taz. Fair enough. You know, like that. I can I, I think he got a from a wrestling point of view. He got a, a raw deal. A raw fucking deal. Like we're talking about ECW. Like he did a bit commentating in ECW with Joey Styles. You know, just like what mm. a way to go against the curve. You know, he was small, but he was like a pit bull, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Taz is great. I think we're both agree. We both agree Taz, Taz is an is a excellent commentator. Right. Uh, um, but uh, in 2003, you start getting like the coach involved. Oh, yeah. I like, forgot about all this. That wasn't good. No. And like R- Raw go through so many different iterations. Taz on, Taz on ECW in 2006, I, I, I enjoyed with Joey Styles. So, yeah, I thought it was great. And I wasn't a big fan of Mike Adamley on ECW. But this thing, like I was about to say, Vince doesn't really know anymore what, didn't even know anymore what a commentator was mm. he would bring in people who knew nothing about wrestling Mike Adamley remember Rob Bartlett he like, was Mike there, Adamley he was, was so bad that I felt really bad for him Jeff I, Harvey he I, was, I, and I, that was just him standing in the crowd but he would like Mike, Mike Adamley would be like a deer in headlights he'd just get caught and he had dementia though apparently awful, or he had early yeah. onset dementia and stuff Jesus stuff. terrible terrible and then they met in the GM so they found a role for him yeah, but then they did. So what I always, what I never liked was commentators who came from the outside of wrestling. They wanted to bring in. Uh, I always judged them. They wanted to bring in Mike Goldberg from UFC. Yeah, and he probably would have been good to replace Jr. Like they were always trying to replace Jr. Yeah, the Goldberg rumor was there for a very long time. Mm. Um, Renato. But that that's a, a bit long longer. But like before that, you had uh, Josh Matthews. Josh, he went to TNA. Wasn't a big fan. Kevin of that. Kelly was there for a while Kevin in the nineties. Kevin Kelly, talk, he's in New Japan. I think uh, he's was brilliant in New, New Japan. Japan. Yeah, I think there's something about it now. I know obviously he did a few AEW things after that and had a fallout with uh, Shivani. Can't remember. Can. Rick Aban, Ian Rick Aban. Oh, here. sorry, that's Rick it. Of, yes, yeah, 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 yeah the knows. Ring of Honor guy. But. Um, I, I thought him on him and JR in New Japan was class. Yeah, that was, they really added weight to it yeah. or something. Um, you had Todd Grisham. 
you know, a lot of these guys aren't... Uh, the Spanish announce table. Oh, Hugo Savanovich. <laughs> yeah. Carlos Herrera. Or, those, those poor, poor guys, guys never got to sit at a table. Never, no. They were like, oh, come on, man. Seriously, again? There's a while then they were wheeling out like, this is the Spanish and the German and they had like a whole the row French, of the, the French, Indian, the, the Indian, they, they, and they're like, the Chinese, the Japanese, everybody. I remember being in Amsterdam. Like, I don't smoke any stuff or anything like that and... Like, I went home and Raw was on, and I was watching Raw in Dutch. <laughs> I was like, this is... Bizarre. This is very strange. Well, pretty cool as well, I'd say. Uh, no. no. Didn't understand. No, it, it was just like... But it took away from my enjoyment of it, mm. which is strange, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's like when you go it, they're still... They're doing the same things that they're doing on the English-speaking channels. It's just that... Have like, you gone to many or any, um, like... Uh, televised wrestling events like US shows obviously you've no. gone to OTT and stuff yeah uh, I remember going to OTT Forbidden Door and I'm sitting there in the bleachers my pal watching Forbidden Door in Chicago and they you're, we're there pre-show obviously we're there really early to see everything and they bring the commentators out and I'm like ah oh, there's yeah, Taz music. there's Tony Schiavone yeah team music they JR they all sit down and then I'm like they're there can't hear any of them yeah and I'm just watching the match and I'm just every night again I'll just look over at the lads Still sitting there now. Look it's at them. So, so, so it's so strange. It's I remember strange. the first time I went to wrestling. I was like, "How am I going to hear the commentators?" Yep. I thought they were coming out over the tannoy. Apparently, there's a wrestling promotion where there's a guy that does that. I think uh, his name is Sanjay Baga uh, in LDN. I think they run up in the north north of Ireland. But like, he gets a microphone out when the matches are on and commentates. I don't know if he commentates, but he tries to get people on the side of the good guy in the oh, bag. Oh, yeah. No. I think it. I think does that's work? one. Okay. Yeah, pro- I'm sure it does. It kind of lead l- lends to the whole kind of panto element of what wrestling can because wrestling could be anything. Yeah. So, um, you know, but I, I, when you get that narrative and you get that story on it, that is told by you know our so tours. Who, who who is the '90s JBL commentator? Didn't he for a while? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, like that's what so I wanted to get to, to the SmackDown 2000 so, crew. So SmackDown 2000, like Foley goes in there. Uh, you get JBL, who I loved on commentary, yeah, it's particularly his first run. I thought he was uh, he was very very good, and oh. then he came back wrestling. Yeah, um, and then like you know you'd have uh, Punk like, Punk when he did it like three week stint on it. That was great. Yeah, um, I'm even better on commentary. Yeah, like there's and uh, you know you'd always like a special guest commentator uh, as well. Oh, I used to love again. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I still kind of like that. I think it's a really good it, when good they're stick. good though. I remember like there there'd be some people on it. And Stephanie. Like, yeah, they're like, why are you putting Stephanie them? was awful. Why on. would you put this person on it? They're, they they cannot speak. Do you know who I used to love as a special guest commentator? Shane O'Mac back in the yeah, Attitude yeah. Era. I thought he was... Because he, he started off in commentary. Yes, he did. Yeah. And he started off as a... Re- oh, I don't know. Did he what? used to take the jackets off the, oh, off yeah. the clothes yeah, 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 and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, a runner or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I was watching Shotgun Saturday Night there uh, recently from Penn State. Or not Penn State, the, the station under Madison Square Garden. Okay. And it was Sonny and Vince. Commentating. Yeah, and then Clarence Mason came down Clarence and co- co-commentated with them. and They're all trying to find little... Yeah, yeah. Th- like because they don't have it worked out, mm. they're all trying to find little things. That's cool. That's why B-Show... It was kind of like us when we tried to do the commentating. Whew, yeah. yeah. Couldn't talk about that. Yeah, so we, like, we, we initially... The very first video on the Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show is an unlisted video of myself and Dunf oh, man. recording commentary for a dream match on WWE 2K23 and it was Kenny Omega against CM Punk in uh, in Wembley so it's all call created um, like the, it's a great call community and we were trying to just be like yeah I'd like to do that we'd do some fantasy matches get people to send in matches that, that, they, want us, <laughs> that they want us to commentate on we had a good sound set up and it's just we just we didn't really gel like you were like being the good guy I was being the bad guy I came in I think it would work the opposite way yeah I think you uh, you called it right I came in like way at, way, 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 way too high. high I had nowhere to go oh my god oh, we're here oh, 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 oh. I was like you're you're dumb Weston this whole thing I guess I'm done yeah and I was, I was gassed after yeah. <laughs> after a minute uh, yeah that was a deep dive into you know something that I thought I'd be okay I think I'd, I would love to give it another shot I'd, I'd love to try commentary on something even like you know alternate commentary on things where, cool. the, where the real one goes out but like also 
there's this silly one that we're doing. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, maybe maybe we'll get onto OTT for an OTT Insider special. I don't think we've sold ourselves as the <laughs> next generation of commentary in OTT. I, th- I think, uh, yeah, but it's kind of like anything. You know, you think that you're going to be good at something and then you do it. And it was like, a learning. Actually, yeah, we learned a lot that day. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's all about training. Yeah. <laughs> sure, the very first podcast we ever recorded, the sound wasn't working. And yeah. in fact, we actually recorded 20 minutes before this podcast because I never pressed record on oh, these man. mics. We've been repeating a lot of things. <laughs> We've just told that story for the second yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> but we brought it up naturally because and we're pros. We're great actors. So hopefully the cameras are recording. Um, <laughs> oh my God. NXT, uh, then you get Morrow. Yeah. Uh, not our Morrow. Morrow Ronaldo. Uh, Mamma Mia. I really liked him. I, I think he brought great credence. So he's to the exception to what I was talking about, where I didn't like them bringing in outsiders. Yeah. I thought he was perfect. He had a beautiful voice. Like, you, all, you also need a, you need a good Sultry voice. voice. Yeah, you need a good voice. Like, well, I don't think we'd be great. I, well, like Kevin Patrick, the Irish lad that was on it, you know, he gave it a good, so, solid try. Yeah. It, well, like, for American audiences. Didn't go down you, well on Twitter. No, you can, for American audiences, yeah. you can imagine that be jarring. Yeah, I kind of found it curious. That's Vince's, uh, his love of being Irish, you know. You think that's what it was? I think. He went through a lot of commentators there recently, though. Like, there was, there seemed to be a new guy every four weeks. Like, there's guy. Like, Vic Joseph, he was a guy. He's probably, he's probably still there. I don't, I don't know half of the, Mm. the guys that they went through in the last 10 years. David Atunga, uh, Mace, they tried him. Mm. Remember Mace from, uh. Oh, Tunga got a decent run of it. Yeah. Remember Mace from Retribution? Yeah. He got a run, and I think uh, um, Renee Young got a run. Saxton, what? I hate Saxton in those two K games. Yeah. I hate the commentary in all wrestling games. Saxton is bring the- me back to the game, the the days of like uh, SmackDown. Just bring it where it'd be like Taz it's is just- going up against the Undertaker yeah. for the Intercontinental Title. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, ju- it's just LMSL. Jr. It's yeah. it one man boot, wasn't it? Oh. Uh, Saxton for me is the most bland commentator there ever. There ever will be, ever yeah. was, yeah. And Did they have Washington, a guy called Washington as well? Yeah. They went through a lot. And NXT seems to have gone through a lot as well because you had Corey Graves, who I really enjoy. I know he gets a lot of stick, but I, I remember seeing him for the first time and going, this guy has something. I like Corey Graves. Um, Beth Phoenix, she was in NXT for, for a while. I thought she was quite good. And who else? Pat McAfee. McAfee, McAfee just seems to have brought Michael Cole out of a shell. See, McAfee is... There's there's different things you can bring to a commentary booth. You can bring expertise, you can bring professionalism, uh, but you can bring energy. Yeah, and that's what McAfee brings. Yeah. And it, uh, McAfee's energy is very contagious. Yeah, so it's very enjoyable to listen to. I love them up on like you know when Nakamura was playing like guitar and stuff. Yeah. I remember hearing about him when he showed up to WrestleMania in like a pair of shorts, and yeah. there was like everyone was giving out. But I was like, that's Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee has a level of cool factor that Triple H will would would, uh, would yeah, be dying would for. Be dying for it. Did Triple yeah. H do commentary during the COVID era as well for a bit? He did. Yeah, remember he had the Bailey thing where she'd be coming up to him yeah. and stuff. I like I like Wade Barrett I think currently. Triple H isn't the bad commentator either because he's got a very deep voice. Mm. So it's, right, Wade Barrett is quite good now. Barrett is good. It's funny they love uh, an English color commentator as well. Like there's been a good few English voices also. Barrett. Barrett, Lord Alfred Hayes, over in AEW, you've got um, Nigel, McGuinness. Nigel McGuinness. Nigel McGuinness is great as well. McGuinness is good. Like, McGuinness will go down as one of those expert I think, I think McGuinness is legitimately funny, though, as well. Yeah. You know, like, uh, he, he said that some comment about Brian Danielson and Brie about eating eating very and you're just oh, yeah, like yeah. oh this is so there's like a silence yeah it's so fun i think i think he is very very funny yeah he's not na- very natural as well yeah very natural um i think wwe missed a beat by him mm. uh, or with him on that and like smackdown and raw like there's that era where it's just kind of forgettable stuff what other female apart from renee young and Beth. sunny bet any other females they don't really get a good run of it uh I suppose it's kind of like when when the Fink turned into Lillian Garcia, there was a bit of, well, that's not what I'm used to. Yeah, I like Lillian. And I I, get, I got you used go to Lillian. Them, I I think, and uh, I think she's brilliant. But what I find is in commentary, they don't give the females long enough to try get so, that comfort, yes. and also for the the audience to retune what they're used to. Samantha Irvin was the best. Yeah, she's brilliant. Best yeah. announcer up there with the Fink. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, AW, I did they they seem to have rotating commentators. Like a lot. Like, what does Excalibur do that Tony Schiavone doesn't, and vice versa? Th- that is a, a slight problem. Um, 
and they wheel JR out constantly for main events. For four man boots. And they wheel JR for main events when it's the lat. They should be wheeling out for the opener. Like, don't bring him out for the main event when that, he's, that's he's the key moment to get the story sold. I like JR. I, well, no, actually. No, he's done. He's a JR Pete. Don't be bringing out JR for like when you're ba- putting bags on people's heads because he doesn't like that stuff no. and he is not going to sell it for you. <laughs> but JR, JR peaked in 2000 and you know 1999 2001 and then he retired in my head in new japan pro wrestling <laughs> yeah. so as his aw run for me has been terrible sure he gets all the names wrong he's you know poor al jr big yeah. fan of jr but i'd like to see him there's a stop. lot of uh, indie commentary that you would hear on matches which is just lads shouting and that's why uh, angus mcanally mm-hmm. is so refreshing yeah, on uh, OTT commentary. I know he's had a few different dance partners as well, but he's been fairly consistent for it. Where w- who would you compare his style to? Old Shivani, maybe. Which is yeah, I'd g- I think he's more on the gorilla almost. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he comes out in the in the in the nice yeah, suit like and the everything. Professionalism. Yeah, uh, just the credence. There's a bit of class about him. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree. No, no, I I get that. Um, and yet he has the modern. And he makes great... Understanding of like how ma- matches should, should move yeah, forward. Yeah, I'm not... Like, he has that acting background. I'm not trying to kiss his ass, like, but he, he makes really good calls. Like, when you're trying to think of... When you <laughs> when you try and think of, like, classic calls, you yeah. know, a lot of them that I think of immediately is in OTC. I know I consume a lot of it anyway, but, yeah. like, you know, I said the unstoppable force meets the immovable object. You know, but you don't bring a water bottle to an axe fight. He said that there on a recent thing, and I was like, that's... That's Hilarious. class. Yeah. That's really fun. Do you think? Do you think he would have jotted that down before he would have known the water bottles coming out, or do you think that was off the cuff? I don't know. I don't know. So he has it in him to come off the cuff. Yeah, he does. And I, I think if I was to do it, a commentary thing, I'd have to be oh. so. I'd like you'd have to be so. Oh, Jim Cornette, he was a great commentator too. Cornette, yeah, class. Corny, he was a brilliant. Co- I know he got cancelled for saying that thing in NWA. Um, ah, Cornette is a, an expert, a wrestling historian, so he would yeah. have the pedigree. Um, but like, I would have to, like, I would have my little beats that I want to get across for each guy. Hopefully, have an understanding of wrestling to be able to go. All right, he's doing this because of this. Yeah, he's doing that because of this. But also get the character across. Have you ever seen like, uh, like a commentator of a football match? Yeah, they'll have like a folder and yeah. they'll have something about every they'll person. Have stats though and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Stats. Yeah, but I think that's what if I was commentating, I would have prepared my ass off. Yeah, I think I'd have more quips. You just have quips. I think a lot more quips. Give me one. No. Go on. No. Give us a little test. I'm not giving you a quip. Go on, quip. I'm not giving you a quip. Someone has to pay me for a quip. You give me a stat. Uh. 99% of people know that you can't quip on the cuff. Exactly. There we go. Off I the cuff. I think we'll, I'll think we'll end it there. <laughs> Off the cuff. I think we'll end it there. <laughs> yeah. End that, it there. That's all, folks. Uh, wait. Before you edit, end it, what is the optimal boot? Men in boot or women in How boot? many boots are we talking? One man boot, Joy Styles. Boot Murphy. No, how many boots? <laughs> uh, yeah. One man boot, Joy jo Styles. No. Oh, a... Uh, yeah, two man boost is probably the best. And I think if you were to watch wrestling now and you go, if you could put any two guys from our understanding of what, you know, growing up watching mainly American wrestling from the late 80s till now, mm-hmm. I, I'd love to see a Gorilla Bobby connection again, yeah. as opposed to JR and King. Even though that JR is, you know, your childhood there, Gorilla and Bobby are like, we end where we started on this conversation, really, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, no, Taz. <laughs> Taz and who? One man boot. Taz, Just Taz. Taz one man boot. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, Gorilla, Gorilla Bobby, 100%. Case closed. Case closed. This has been the Wrestling Fan at Wrestling Show, our second attempt. Hopefully all this is <laughs> recording. Thanks very much uh, for consuming all this wrestling nonsense that we put out there on a weekly basis. So we're going to continue to do so because it's fun. Please like subscribe and uh comment below we'll respond buy you, our merch buy, yeah we have merch we have t-shirts we have uh, Healy Ray Mysterio we have the Super Nature Boy and we also boo. have yeah boo yeah and we also have CM Pork and they're all awesome mm-hmm. I have them you have them yeah they're great go get them they're on Red Bubble. I can't put a link on our YouTube channel just go search for the Wrestling Fan Wrestling Show 
like you have done by looking at us on YouTube. And if we just happen to show up on your feed, I apologize, but hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks very much for listening. Stay safe, stay sane.